Now, a White House whistleblower named Tricia Newbold claims that the Trump administration shouldn't have granted security clearances to at least 25 individuals. Now, in doing so, Newbold called out a top personnel security official named Carl Klein. Now, as a result, Klein, who isn't a political appointee, has had his name dragged through the mud and has been subpoenaed by Congressman Elijah Cummings and has had to hire a lawyer. So are Democrats really in favor of smearing a career civil servant because of their hatred for President Trump? Okay, joining me now to tell Mr. Klein's story for the first time is his attorney, Robert Driscoll. All right, Robert, we saw private citizens fall victim to the Mueller probe, huge legal bills. I've never heard of Carl Klein. I don't understand what's going on here. Explain. Carl Klein worked in the security office. He was 25 years in the military, 18-year civil servant, doing nothing but security clearances for all but two of those years. Uh, he's not a political appointee, and uh, the Democrats are doing an investigation where they want to get into the SF-86 and the FBI files of top, you know, prop administration appointees. And so they're alleged that somehow this career civil servant is the reason that, that uh, they can get into these things. And so they subpoenaed him personally. Um, before the, the House, and now uh, he's got a compelled deposition, even though I offered uh, Chairman Cummings in a letter on Monday morning for him to appear voluntarily. So if he'd appear voluntarily, why do they go through the rigmarole of... Well, because they and the White House have a disagreement on scope. The White House doesn't think that the House should have the you know, uh, raw personnel files of everybody, which is a reasonable position. But whatever that position is, it's not my client's problem. I mean, he, works, he worked for the White House. He no longer works there. And, you know... He'll answer what he's allowed to answer, and he won't answer what he's not allowed to answer. But he's a career employee. It's not his problem, and yet he's, he's the one subpoenaed in this. Does he know this Tricia Newbold? Uh, well, they worked in the same office, yeah. I mean, he, he was her superior. And so, I mean, the way the, the, this, this all works is... Um, oh, I didn't realize they were in the exact same office. Okay, now it's all making mm -hmm. sense. So she's calling out the boss man, saying the boss right. man, a 25-year-old, so he worked through eight years of Obama... Oh, yeah. Was there dur during Clinton? I guess well, well he's Clinton. doing security things. He just worked the, the most recent job in the White House for okay. Trump. But he's been doing security clearance issues for his entire career. This is what he does, is analyze security clearance files. And so the way the process works, when a White House employee file goes in, a line person looks at it, a supervisor looks at it, and if someone thinks there's a problem, it goes to Carl's desk. And she was below Carl in the chain of command, and she was upset about some of the decisions he made and felt that her superior didn't explain them sufficiently to her. And so that's she seems like a disgruntled from. employee. I know they call her a whistleblower, right. but I'm just surmising she had some disciplinary uh, issue, I know, a, a two-week two deal. Maybe it's not the end of the world, but... There's an EEO complaint that, that, that Carl's sworn uh, to secrecy on to for the, yeah. respect the process. Mm -hmm. Novel concept, respect confidentiality where, where it's appropriate. Uh, he'll be clear to that eventually. But all of this is just dragging a career guy in for no reason. Well, Elijah Cummings said they're not trying to embarrass um, Trump. They just want a process that the, works. This is an inverse Fusion GPS. In Fusion GPS, they used oppo research to try to create an investigation. Here, they've created a fake investigation to do oppo research. Because... <laughs> oh, my God, that's so genius for them to do, but it's so nefarious and so not... Because cool. if you think about it, there's no legislation Congress can pass that would affect the president's ability to grant or not grant security clearances. It's a plenary presidential authority. So there's no... What, what's this investigation going to lead to? Well, what's going to lead to is the Democrats getting yeah. hold of some SF-86 files and going through them for all the high-profile people they want and leaking it to the media. Leaking personal information about their background. Look at what happened with the, the whistleblower. She went in over the weekend, and on Monday, the names of the people she talked about were made public. Unbelievable. At least speculation. No, no, no. Robert, this made it so much clearer for us. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. We'll keep in touch with you after you. South Bend, Indiana Mayor Pete Buttigieg. Everybody has to learn how to say Pete Buttigieg, right? Is expected to enter soon, and he is already starting to apologize for something. And that is the fact that he, in the past, used the phrase, all lives matter. Unfortunately, uh, it was not obvious to everybody that black lives were being valued the same. And so that is the contribution of Black Lives Matter, and it's a reason why, since learning about how that phrase was being used to push back on that activism, I stopped using it in that context.
All right, so joining me now, Charlie Hurt, Washington Times opinion editor, and Jamu Green, former candidate for chair of the DNC. Oh, Both oh, are Fox News contributors. Jamu, you have been around the party and working on bringing out the vote for your entire career. When you look at Pete Buttigieg, what do you make of his candidacy, and what do you make of his comment about all lives matter? Well, first of all, congrats on stumping the possible candidate with that question. That was that was fantastic, Martha. Look, I actually I ran against Mayor Pete. We ran against each other for the Democratic National Committee chair position and we traveled to lots of different forums together. My question to Mayor Pete, to a lot of these, you know, almost running folks, where's the substance? You know, we've seen from Kamala Harris a, a plan to give teachers a pay raise that they so desperately need. We've seen policy positions from Elizabeth Warren that go into just so much detail, whether it's breaking up Facebook and other tech giants or universal child care. There's a real issue I have with the attention that Howard Schultz and some of these other um, B brothers uh, who are running uh, on the Democratic side, the attention they get for the personality versus the substance. Where's the beef? Did you say the B? Who did you, what did you call them? The B brothers. Biden, Beto, Beto, Mayor Pete. Biden, Buttigieg. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, it's them. interesting. They are stealing a lot of the attention out there. Um, Charlie, what do you think? Well, and of course, uh, also, you know, a good 50 to 60 percent of Democratic voters are behind uh, Biden, or two of the B brothers, Biden and uh, 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 Bernie Sanders, and of course, and uh, which is kind of strange. Oh, Bernie, when you we consider, him. Yeah, yeah, when you consider the fact that you're talking about two of the uh, oldest uh, people uh, in you know in, in the Democratic race, they've been around Washington for decades. They haven't fixed anything. Uh, in addition to that, you've got a party that is built on uh, identity politics, and for two old white guys to be sort of collecting the lion's share of the of the uh, support at the moment. Uh, is trouble. But I tell you, you know, Donald Trump looks at this field and he feels very confident because, you know, he sees these Democrats, they're all falling over one another and uh, trying to support things like open borders or reparations now or, you know, all of the live birth abortion, all of these crazy things that are, are really fringe of the fringe. And if he's going to go into battle uh, for 2020, uh, that's what he wants to be going up against. So he's feeling very confident right now. Well, interesting to note that Howard Schultz said tonight he was not in favor of third trimester abortion that. or reparations. Um, so a lot of alternatives was, me, out there was, for people to, to think me, over. On, yeah. on, on, on issues, to me, uh, that was the most interesting thing out of that uh, entire very, all of it was interesting. But to me, that was the most important thing because, uh, as Jamu pointed out, it was about issues and uh, it was about issues yeah. that are important to most people. But you know what? When well, he what said what next. will make news. Look, real quick, Jamu, thank you. He said what would make news is his support for universal catastrophic insurance. And I don't think that's mm -hmm. going to make news. The politics of it is going to make news, the personality, kind of the squabbling, the wedge issues. And that's a shame because that does benefit Donald Trump. And so Democrats need to come together on the substance, I think, and move away from the personality so much. All right. Jamu and Charlie, thank you very much. Thank Great you. to see you both tonight. Thanks for being here. There are reports tonight that some members of the special counsel team investigating alleged Russian collusion during the 2016 election may feel that the attorney general is not adequately portraying the results of that investigation and the report. The administration is pushing back hard on anonymously sourced stories. This comes as Republican lawmakers are looking into the ethics of the investigation itself. Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Herridge has details tonight. The Justice Department issued a rare public statement taking issue with media accounts that the Mueller report contains summaries that were releasable. Quote, every page of the confidential report provided to Attorney General Barr on March 22, 2019, was marked may contain material protected under a law that protects confidential grand jury information and therefore could not be publicly released. The New York Times first reported some special counsel investigators told associates that their findings are far more negative than Barr's four-page summary released last month. A senior Democrat said it backs up his efforts to see the full report and secure Mueller's testimony. There's some dissatisfaction over how, how accurately uh, Barr represented the report, but again, 
The answer is, let's see it. On Twitter, the president knocked the story, writing, the New York Times had no legitimate sources, which would be totally illegal concerning the Mueller report. In fact, they probably had no sources at all. Despite the president's tough talk about what he calls a witch hunt, one of the president's former attorneys told the podcast the president was nothing but cooperative in the Mueller investigation. All this, what I call uh, mainstream knee-jerk theories, these wild theories that he was really trying to get rid of Bob, that was not Separately, these letters obtained by Fox News show Republican Senators Grassley and Graham alerted Barr last month that congressional investigators uncovered evidence of potential improper political influence, misconduct, and mismanagement in the Russia probes. Fox News understands the senators wanted Barr to have the information before he reviewed Mueller's findings. After congressional investigators alleged, special counsel prosecutors used selective quotes and court filings to create the most negative interpretation possible. This 2017 letter shows Grassley directly warned Mueller, citing emails from Trump campaign aide George Papadopoulos, among others, about traveling to Russia during the presidential race. Quote, in the full context, the emails in question actually show that the Trump campaign wanted someone low-level to declare these types of invitations. On the Mueller reports delivered to Congress, there is significant time pressure. At the end of next week, both the House and Senate go on recess. Sources tell Fox News Justice Department officials hope to complete their review in coming days, meeting the Attorney General's goal of mid-April, Brett. Captain, thank you.